Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome to Carbon Gaming. Uh, our first deck of the week for our first installment of this series is going to be Zoropod. Um, as we can see here, we'll pull it up. I think it's a pretty good deck overall. Um, I've been using it a little bit in the past couple weeks, and we're going to go through the deck, basically talk about why things are there, what they're used for, and you know, talk about some text you can put in as well. But this is just the first... Um, look at it and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we'll actually play with it. So obviously this deck is centered around Zorark. Um, we do a 4-3 one line. Um, the three trade Zorarks. I found that you know having four is beneficial however three seems to be fine and I want to include a stand in Zorark in there as well um, just to get that you know retreatability and getting the Glissopod out of the active. Um, trade obviously is a great ability. It's been highly used in the past few months ever since Zorak was released and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, obviously fighting has been a big issue however Glissopod does help with that um, being the weakness to Zygarde and Lycanroc which are two big techs in Buzzwool. Um, along with the Buzzwool matchup you gotta watch out or Buzzwool in general, because he basically runs through any Zeruas and can really run through a Zorark on turn two if uh, they have a solid turn one. So Mewtwo is the best I can do with it. Uh, it's a single prize attacker, so it at least can use a DCE to do a fair amount of damage to Buzzwool, at least get it within that knockout range. However, if the Buzzwool is fully powered up, then uh, DC with the choice band is a knockout. So uh, it's been a good tech so far, and it might seem like a clunky combo with the DC choice band here. Let me get this in here so you guys can see the counts on everything. Um, might seem clunky with DC choice band. However, with Zorark, you can run through your deck pretty quick, and uh, you find it without a problem most of the time. Um, like I said, Glissopod, I do 3-2, that seems to be fine. Uh, you typically want two win pods out at a time, just so you can ace a roll, as you can see we play three here. Um, however, you know, you might not get that lucky, but this is the win pod you want to play. Wimp out during the first turn, Pokemon has no retreat cost, that has helped me a hundred times. Um, I didn't realize how good that ability was until I actually started playing. And it, it's amazing how helpful that becomes when you know all you have is a wind pot and an ultra ball. You can still get that turn one bridge it out and you can retreat it back to your active or the bench, excuse me. Glissopod is good because it's Glissopod. Um, if you don't know what it does, first impression is the main reason why it's good. <laughs> if it's on the bench and becomes your active during the turn for one grass energy does 120. We have Lucario now that does this as well, which we'll probably be playing here. Um, maybe next week depending we might try something else but we'll be playing Lucario at some point um, so but it's between Lucario and Glissopod and which one's better um, so we'll be testing Glissopod this week it's second attack 100 damage takes 20 less damage which can be really helpful and then crossing cut with a choice band can knock out any basic GX for the most part besides Buzzwool of course but um, you know that's what Mewtwo's for also uh, this Tapu Koko this is a great like first turn attacker for those decks that you can't hit the right numbers. Getting 20 damage on everything really helps getting those numbers up. And that way with the choice ban, Glitzpod will be knocking out a Buzzwool. Um, and the free retreat, of course, is super important. That's why I play two in this deck. Um, you can definitely play one, but the free retreat has come in handy multiple, multiple times. Um, it, it's a really good tech for this deck, and I would recommend two, but... Like I said, this is just a skeleton for the deck if you want to make it your way. You know, you do you. Do what you think is important. Um, two Lele's, that seems to be fine. Um, sometimes you do prize one, but for the most part, you want Lele early game and late game. So the early game for the Bridget, late game for the Guzma. And by the late game, you will hopefully have that Lele uh, in your hand. Two E Hammers seems to help against the Mirror. Um, seems to help against any Zorark deck, really. Um, and it also can help against Buzzwool, which is really like the most popular deck right now. We'll see with Charlotte 
what happened with Charlotte on Sunday. I'm recording this on Saturday, so we'll figure that out. Um, and I'll mention that in our Tuesday video. Four field blower, pretty important. Um, Garb kills this deck. Um, it's so ability reliant with Zorark. If you don't have Zorark, you're probably not getting the draws you need. So uh, the four field blowers seem to be pretty, pretty dire to this deck. Also gets rid of Parallel. Parallel is also kind of rough against this deck. So um, they're pretty necessary. I think you can go down to three without seeing too much of a difference. But four's worked for me so far. And always, if you don't aim, you can trade them away. Grab something else you need. For Puzzle Time, that's just a staple in Zorark. You need that. Um, since you're getting rid of so many resources, you might have to get rid of something you don't want to. Um, but you always have those puzzles there to get that back. So um, that's what they're there for. Rescue Stretcher, you probably won't want to use a puzzle. To just grab one Pokemon out of the discard. So that's what Rescue Stretcher is there for. You can you know grab that Pokemon you need. Ultra Ball is a staple in every deck. Um, Acerola, really important part in this deck. Um, put one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand. Buzzwool's like pretty hefty, so chances are he'll have you know between 180 and 200 damage on him, and you can just pick him right up. And it's like nothing happened, and then slap him down on another Wimpod, which is you know the benefit to having that other Wimpod on your bench. So Acerola is super good. Um, especially in this deck. Um, and e there's even chances where you can use it on your Zorark, so um, there's really no downfall to it. And once again, if you don't need it, you trade it away, and that's the beauty with this deck. If there's something you don't need, you just trade it away. Okay, sorry about that. So two Bridget. Um, I don't find myself prizing those too often. Um, and like I said, this deck is pretty set in what you want in it, so... The two Bridget are there just to make sure there's space for something else. Uh, you could play three if you feel that you've been, you're have been you prizing both of them, uh, but most of the time you're just going to play one Bridget throughout the game, and then you'll trade the other one away later. Um, so two seems to be fine. Two Cynthia and three N. I want to group those two together. You want to kind of disrupt your opponent more than help yourself most of the time. Um, because with those Zorark out, you won't need too much draw support once you get them. So the two Cynthia are good for early game, um, but the N are great for late game. Uh, the four Guzma, it's a super high count, as high as it can be. But I found that four Guzma is like exactly what you want. I've won so many games because I've had that Guzma last turn. Um, four is the perfect number in my opinion for this deck getting glisspod out of the active and back in um, to hit that 120 getting anything that might be stuck like a Zorark might be stuck or a Mewtwo or one pod getting those out perfect for Guzma and just your opponent might be hiding up Pokemon because most of this deck is a two-hit knockout so you might put 120 on something that will retreat it out and start hitting with something else you just Guzma that back in and you know take care of that Mallow is a card you have to have in a Zorark deck. Just, if you don't know what Mallow does, you put two cards on top of your deck and then shuffle your deck, keep those two cards on top. So if you trade away something, you get any two cards. It's It, it just works perfectly in this deck, especially if you're looking for energy. Um, as you see, we play a low count of grass or that choice band DC combo from you too. Uh, it, it's the perfect card for that. Two Sycamore, you don't want to overdo the Sycamores in this deck just because you're already trading away so much, you don't want to deck yourself out, and it's as simple as that. Uh, the two Choice Bands, it's all I have room for. If I would make a change, um, I would probably get rid of one Field Blower and put in one Choice Band. But, you know, like I said, it's up to you. Um, at the end of the week when we go over the performance, I might talk about that some more, but uh, that's just my opinion on it right now. And then 4 DCE for Zorark and Galissapod, and 4 Grass for the Galissapod. Um, that's the deck. We're going to be playing with it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so we'll get three really good matches in. Um, and then on Friday, we'll go over the review a bit and what we think. So before we go, I just got a pack, so might as well open it on camera, right? Well, I don't know if you can hear that cat, but he's having a good time. Oh, an uncommon chest too, why not? These are always garbage. Yep, shield on. 
and then Guardians Rising. Let's hope for that lately. My luck with packs has been trash lately. I bought a Lucario box yesterday and it was garbage. Haunch Crow. Perfect. Alright guys, well, thank you so much for watching. Check back here tomorrow, uh, same time, and we'll have a matchup up on the channel. Um, some great commentary, and hopefully a win. So, thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.